is Aroma here and welcome back to Duggerman We're here. I am going to agree to meet up with this man. Bad ending number what? <laughs> I've had too much contact with Rodian to refuse. And to be honest, I don't mind meeting him at all. I like to see him what oops one more time before we say goodbye to this town for good. But the question is, should I tell Castle and Vincent? Keep it a secret so we can get bad ending, whatever. It'd probably be better if I just ran out to meet him real quick than to waste time trying to explain. If I'm only gone for a few minutes, I'm sure no one will notice. And for some odd reason, I really want to keep my friendship with Ronin a secret. Besides, if Castle finds out, so will Vincent. And he'd make fun of me, of course, or say something unpleasant in the very least. Anyway, why do I have to report to them? They don't tell me anything, not even about the so-called investigation we're on. Now, all we need to figure out a good... Uh, all I need is to figure out a good time to sneak away and how to do it stealthily enough. The day proves to be a good opportunity while Cass sleeps in the hotel and Vincent and I go for a walk. At a certain point, I tell him that I'm tired and we sit down on a nearby bench. One thing he pulls out a paper bag and begins thumbing through it. I need a bathroom. Mm, if I'm right, if I'm right, we're close to the cafe, we can walk there. It's an emergency. So urgent, you can't hold it another 10 minutes? You're the one ready to give in to your natural instincts. Yep. Ugh, I'm sorry you even asked. Vincent grimaces in disgust and turns his attention back to his book. Manipulating him is too easy, especially knowing his weaknesses, like his excessive cleanliness. I immediately dash around a house and behind some bushes where I message Rory, and unfortunately the city is relatively compact and the young man is free. Oh, he's so cute. Ready for a bad ending, guys? Fucking hell. I'm so tired of these bad endings. I'm gonna be traumatized by this game. This game's gonna give me trauma, like um, amnesia memories. Toma? Toma's name, right? F fucked me up years after. Not long before Ronin comes running up to me all out of breath. Oh, you're here. He approaches me hate so hastily and with such a big smile on his face that I'm certain he's going to hug me. He's so beautiful in this form. I mean, he's pretty cool in the other form too. Fortunately, he stops just short, but is still smiling enthusiastically. Yeah, because I think he's head over heels for me. He's unable to hide his feelings at all, which hurts all the more. Thank you for letting me know you're leaving. I have something for you. I hope you'll remember all this. I would like you to remember me. He hands me an unusual looking pendant. I made it myself. It's not expensive or anything, just a trinket. So don't worry about taking it. I turn the incredible, beautiful trinket over with admiration. It's a glass sphere, black on one side and brightly lit on the other. Within the light within that light is a small petrified moth. Is it real? Of course not. I improvised with the materials I filled it, filled it in, then painted it over with epoxy. It looks real. Rodan begins excitedly telling me in detail how he himself has made the pendant. It looks like your eyes. Yes, it kind of does. The moth is me, too. Stopping abruptly, Rodan blushes. Will you accept it? Time for bad ending. <laughs> accept the gift. Rodan's expressive eyes take, a look, take on a look of pleading. I know that I cannot refuse him. Thank you for the gift. I think I'll keep it. Even if it pains me every time I look at it, I'll forever carry it with, a, with me as a keepsake. A reminder of how I, despite only wishing to kill a little time, ended up shattering a crystal clear heart. May I put it on you? DEATH! <laughs> Ernest's eyes are so bright. Bro, why is there so many choices here? Allow him. Sure, why not? I already know this is going to be a bad ending. How can I refuse Rodan when he's looking at me like that? Hear me a great young man beams brightly then steps behind me. I've never given a girl a present before. I've never had such a beautiful beautiful things given to me either. You're incredible. I feel his fingers touch my neck and judging by the way Rodian hesitates, I can tell his embarrassment is making him gun shy. What if we make him fall in love with us and he doesn't fuck anybody up? That would be great, right? If only I could dream. To help him overcome his embarrassment and take it to make it a little easier for him, I pull back my hair, then immediately felt, feel the chain and slide around my neck, causing me to shiver involuntarily. It's cold. Oops, sorry, I didn't realize I needed it to warm it. Rodin's hand slips beneath the chain to protect me from his cool touch and his fingers are scorching hot. So my relief, the moment of strange intimacy lasts but a moment and leaves behind a particularly tart bitterness. Snapping the clasp into place, Rodin removes his hand from my neck. What if this is a true ending though? Us falling in love with him and then he just leaves everyone alone. <laughs> I pick up the pendant to admire its stunning view as Rodin stands behind me. You have a very handsome boyfriend, I'm happy for you. How did you know? Fuck. Morris skips a beat. Was there something in Rodin's voice just now, or am I getting myself worked up for nothing? It's a small town, people talk. Your trio is quite remarkable. Unable to bear this unexplained fear any longer, I turn to face Rodian, but the sight of him immediately reassures me. He is still the same young, sincere, and tender man I've come to noon. 
to know. What was I expecting? A monster? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Letting out a sigh of relief, I carefully study Rodan as he waits for me to say something, his eyes glittering so painfully. I'm sorry I didn't tell you. I'm sure he's talking about Cass. From the outside, we could definitely we could definitely be mistaken for a couple. But I don't think Rodan needs to know the intricacies of our complicated relationship. I saw it myself as you were walking, the way he looked at you. You have a good relationship. He really cares about you, so I can rest easy. His smile is so full of pain, and I feel his anguish. My coach flees me and I embrace the boy. Oh, if only that were true. Hey, why are you crying? Has he hurt you? I might not be able to punch him in the face, but I have homemade smoke bombs. Thank you for the offer, but please tell. And squeeze his lean, flexible body and realize how much stronger his will is than my own. As soon as I finish school, I'll come find you. Then we'll, you'll see a better version of me. I'll be so much cooler than your boyfriend, and I'll never give you a reason to cry. You're so sweet, Rodian. I can't even feel sentimental for this guy, because... He, he's giving me so many bad fucking endings. The young man suddenly yet gently pushes me away. You should calm yourself down and go back to your boyfriend before he notices you're missing. Alright. The blonde young man looks me gently in the eyes before suddenly kissing me on the cheek and running away. All I can do is stand here with my hand over my cheek and be incredibly angry for not allowing myself to fall in love with him. I don't know where this is going. When I finally catch my breath, I head back to Vincent. Catching sight of me, he places his bookmark in his book and carefully sets it down on the bench next to him. Why are you looking at me all suspicious like that? How does the earth not blister and crack carrying someone like you? Did you wash your hands? Well, yeah. Let me see shit demon. <laughs> shit demon? What? Come on. Oh my god. What if he dies instantly because of that necklace I have? It's like some kind of power thing. Vincent takes the bottle, hands the tizer from his pocket, and begins squirting it over my hands, which I'm still holding out to him. I have exercised the demon. I stick my tongue out at him and he rolls his eyes. Rodian stops responding to my messages after our meeting, but their influences seem to have increased. I'm noticing Cass grow more and more emotionless, while Vincent has become nervous and restless. Cass heads out again tonight, leaving me alone with Vincent, who is beginning to act extremely odd. Alright. Seeing a bright light, I feel a strange tug right before my feet hit the hard floor. Then I fall onto my hands and knees. A myriad of sensations overwhelm me. My head feels like it's about to burst. Every muscle in my body is spasming and not responding. My heart is pounding frantically in an attempt to endure the superhuman overload. As my eyes adjust to the light, I immediately regret what I see. I'm in a large, elaborately decorated room with a cool blue light mercilessly illuminating the abomination I see before me. Head lowered limply. Oh my god, wait, he's inside of the body? White hair smeared with blood, a small mouth twisted in agony, and a frail body hanging from a wall supported only by the sword impaled through it. Oh wait! Castle killed him? Cass is holding that sword. I scream in horror before the shock overtakes me and I fall unconscious. Wait, are we safe? Oh my god, are we safe? Oh my god, are we safe? Holy shit, did I choose right? I wake up in the bre bed in the guest room. Bassy is sleeping in the chair next to me. Surprisingly, he's holding my hand. Bro, Bassy, get, get the fuck away from me! I can't fall in love with you! <laughs> Suddenly, all the recent events, all the shocking details flash before my eyes well, well, with startling clarity. Oh, wait, wait. Let me not celebrate too early because Castle could have still died. Pain, despair, and fear grip at me. Cass, Cass killed Rodian. Alright, but who gives a shit about Rodian? Hey, what is this? What? Was that always on there? No, I don't think so, right? <laughs> Bessie sleepily opens his eyes and gently strokes my head. Calm down, it's alright, you're home now. Safe. How am I safe? Cass killed a human. I'm sorry you had to see that. What do you mean I'm sorry you had to see that? Do you honestly believe what happened was normal? That was murder. Cold, merciless, merciless, disgusting murder. Hot tears run down my face as Bessie stares at me, frustrated. I don't know how to calm you down, I'm sorry. Then don't. Cass killed a boy, don't you understand? Please, please explain to my girl that boy was not a boy. It was actually a serpent demon. I grab Bassy by the shoulders and shake him, staring at me. He places his hand on my arm and starts digging into his shoulders. Listen to me, please. Rodian was a Quanzi, a very dangerous one. Outraged at his words, I refuse to let Bassy finish. Dangerous? You consider schoolboy dangerous? Are you all crazy? It's hard to talk to someone who doesn't listen. I'm tired and I don't appreciate you taking this out on me. I'm infinitely patient, Basti speaks quietly and without a hint of malice. Appearances can be deceiving, and Rodian took advantage of his. I don't know how or when you two got close, but it was extremely dangerous. I don't want to I don't want to tell you about all the horrors he's responsible for. There's no need for you to know anyway. I don't care. I have, to, I have a right to know what's going on. I was taken out on a mission, not for a walk. I've been ready for this. Your reaction suggests otherwise. He's right, and I can't deny it. I promised Cass I wouldn't give you all the details, and yes, he's sitting right outside that door. It's where he's been for the last 24 hours. Despite his condition, he's been keeping vigil over, vigil over you. 
Yes, he's alive. Melee jumping to my PR dry out of the guest room. Oh, my baby boys! They're hurt. Well, Vincent looks more hurt than anything. Oh, oh. All the boys. <sighs> and sure enough, Castle and Vincent are sitting by the door. They're both covered in bandages. Half of Cass's face is hidden behind them, but Vincent, who's sleeping on his shoulder, looks even worse. One of his shirt sleeves seems empty. <sighs> he lost his arm? Can he gain that back? I feel pain of pity shoot through me when I catch Cass's worried face, but then I remembered his eyes. As he stared at Ronan's lifeless body, cold and different. The eyes of a murderer. Bitch! Bitch! He is not a murderer! He saved her fucking life! Continue, just watch him. Just watch him. No sound comes from my cramped throat. Did you forget that you love this guy? All I can do is stare and watch. And try to find the answer that I, in fact, already knew. Unable to control my feelings, I ran to my room. I had read all of Rodian's messages and was delighted with this gift. That he was a Quanzia belief. But the rest of it, there's no way. It can't be true. He was so good. And he was murdered so brutally. I cry all day long. Oh, fucking hell. I cry all day long and I'm planning to do the same for the next. But then I hear Basti's voice. Michiko, please come out. We're very worried about you. I don't care. Get out of my head. Well, that, what ill have I ever done to you? What good have you done? I healed you. Yeah, I'll give him that one. <laughs> Fine, I'll come out, but only for you. If I see anyone else, especially that bloody murderer, I take no responsibility for my actions. Good. <sighs> this, you know, this is not the route I wanted. I don't want her to see Castle as a murderer. I walk into the party room. Bassy meets me at the door. I've been very worried about you. Why worry about me? I'm alive, aren't I? Enough of the attitude, please. Yeah, that's right, Bassy. Clap back at her. Bassy clasps his hands together in a pleading gesture. I'm about to continue, but my stomach suddenly rumbles loudly. You must be starving. To the kitchen. I can't cook, but we can eat whatever's in the fridge. Is that okay? I'm no choice but to follow Bassy into the kitchen. He's so cute. Why are you pulling me back to him, game? Do you know I want to go for this man and I can't? Sitting down at the table, Sebastian folds his hands together before laying his head on them. There's something about this man that makes you want to take care of him. He's completely harmless. In fact, I have not once been harassed by him. On the contrary, he's always been incredibly gentle with me. Yeah, and you, you, you're always a damn bitch to him. How rude. Taking, talking, taking the kitchen over, I begin making us something to eat, which seems to calm me a little. I feel like a little. Uh, I feel like a hamster whose cage is shaking in an earthquake. I try to eat nuts, drink water, do anything I can to convince myself that everything is fine despite the work lasting in all of me. Bassy quickly dozes off, but when I place a plate of fragrant food in front of him, he stirs and opens his eyes, just like a rabbit sniffing veggies in its sleep. Much obliged, I love homemade meals. I wonder what causes him to stutter. One would think much obliged would be more difficult than to say thank you. Once again, Bassy smiles gratefully as I sit down next to him, feeling confused. I should never have resented him. He's definitely not like the other Quanzies. This is a different ending. And those dimples are adorable. Bassy? Hmm? I'm sorry I thought you were one of the bad ones. I am a bad one, so it's alright. <laughs> I'm finished eating and decided to continue our different conversation. I don't know what to believe anymore. Messi hesitates and says, I don't know either. His thoughtful eyes gaze back at me. How do you live like this? Messi sighs heavily. I don't. I feel like I'm dead. Um, I'm sorry, I'm not the right person to talk to. He lays his, he lays his head back down on his hands. Don't sleep. I'm trying not to. Why do you sleep so much? I have almost no Quanzi energy. There's no, there's but a drop remaining and I'm endlessly smearing it around. That sounds weird. <laughs> Heck, here we go again. I don't understand the rules of this game at all. Girl, I don't even know either. I don't even... I'm trying so hard to get back to, like, Castle to, for his attention and his love. But I don't even know how to do that anymore. So then why do... Why... So then, you don't understand anything either. Not a single thing. I would love to share my beliefs with you, but I don't even have them anymore. I'm sorry. If that's true, then why even tell me about Rodian? How do you expect me to believe that he was a monster and had done terrible things when you don't even believe it yourself? It's not just him. We're all monsters to a certain extent. Even you. I'm THE monster. What? <laughs> Bassey tries to snarling, but his cheeks dimples as he does. So villainous. As long as you create the illusion that Quanzies and even ordinary people are good and kind and you judge them based on that illusion, you'll only end up getting hurt. Then what do you suggest? To stand by and watch as you all decide which Quanzies deserve to die. To silently watch you destroy anyone you don't like. 
But what if you're wrong? What if your victims are ordinary people? Good people. Kind people. There are no good and kind people among them. So what are you saying is that you kill people. Actually, what really matters here is the number of those killed versus those saved. Bastie pauses briefly before continuing to speak in a soft, melodi melodious voice. And as long as the ra that ratio suits me, I'll still be here. So you're cutting a deal with your own conscience. It's an immortal, immoral to weigh the value of a man's life. It's stupid to believe you can save everyone. The very idea is at odds with, the, with life itself. Having endured it for as long as I can, I jump up and begin screaming. None of that justifies killing the innocent. Again, you didn't see what was concealed behind his facade. Then enlighten me already. He killed more people than our entire team has combined. I don't believe that. Ask Vincent Castle for their report. But given your tendency for distrust, you'll likely say it's all a lie anyway. People are always searching for confirmation of their beliefs. They're still changing your mind. <sighs> Can we please change my girl's mind? I kind of want her back to Castle. Bassie says this forlorn as he closes his eyes. You need to learn to live with the idea that you were rescued by killers. You saved me for your own, own gain. Hmm, think about it. What exactly have we gained with you here? If how you are painting us is true, we'd have gotten rid of you a long time ago. So what are you saying? So what you're saying is that I'm useless. Do you object to that assessment? <laughs> Fuck, bro. Sebastian stares at me with an incredibly amount, incredible amount of compassion and sadness in his eyes. You. This conversation. Why do people who demand honesty never want to believe it when it's given to them? As I sit here dumbfounded, Bassie yawns tiredly and heads back into the party room. Is that how you intend to end this conversation? I'm on the verge of passing out. It wouldn't be polite for me to smash my face on the table, especially with all the crumbs. As soon as Sebastian sets foot on the soft floor of the party room, he almost instantly slumps to the side of the door. I sit down next to him and watch as he falls into a deep slumber. Not wanting anyone to step on him, I drag him away from the door while marveling over how heavy he is in this state. Once I have him situated, I tuck a blanket around him and keep him warm. When I'm fully certain he'll be alright, I head back to my room and plop down on the bed. Who would have thought that this wonderful world of magic and sorcery I now find myself in would be so psychotic and dark? I was enthusiastic before, but now all I feel is fear. Everything that's happened to me thus far has left me feeling un unsteady and weak. The moment I feel I've gotten a firm grasp on things, my faith is violated and twisted until I'm not even sure what to believe in anymore. People live their lives under the illusion of comfort and safety, but now I understand there are no guarantees in life. Like walking through a dark forest full of hungry beasts, even if you think you've found a safe passage, in the end you're only, deceive you're only deceiving yourself. A quantity's life is devoid of illusion of humans. That deceptive light of that people are drawn to from birth, and that they spend every waking moment pursuing. Through their TVs, and their pages of their books and magazines, through music. Everyone is convinced this pursuit gives, them their, gives their lives meaning, that, it, that it's to be cherished. As for those who believe that they found the right path, they try to drag everyone else down, down it with them. But not Quanzies. They need to in invent their own illusions in order to hide the true essence of the world. That only one thing lies in, depth, in the depths of that dark forest. That there's no escaping it. I think I understand Basti now. The only freedom a Kwanzi has is the illusion he chooses for himself. I thought that leaving my mother would be enough, that I immediately discovered my own identity, my own path, but I have yet to take a single step. But tomorrow I must come to terms with Kwanzi's version of morality. What ending is this? I don't know how much more is left to this, but I'm gonna pause here since I'm already like a few minutes late. Uh, from ending it out, but again, if it's a quick thing, I'll merge together. But thank you guys for watching today's episode. Stay beautiful, and I will see you guys in the next one.